Hello, I'm Charles from Charles N Photography. Today's video is going to be about how I choose my wildlife photos when I come home from a photo shoot. Now, shooting wildlife, we're always taking more photos than what we need. Unlike landscape, although in landscape I might take three or four sunset photos or twilight. When we're shooting wildlife, we normally come home with a couple of hundred photos. Well, I do anyway, sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit less depending on if there's a lot of birds around and if those birds are flying around. The first thing I normally do when I come home is they normally all go into one folder and then from that one folder if I've got four or five different types of birds I quickly break them down into those particular folders that way they're very easy to sort out. This is all done before I actually import the photos into Lightroom. I only import the photos in Lightroom that I want to keep. So if I've come home with 300 odd photos, I'm not going to import 300 photos in Lightroom and then go through the tedious process of sorting them out in Lightroom. The reason being is that in Lightroom, when you want to delete a photo, as soon as you hit that delete key, it'll give you two options saying, do you want to delete the photo just out of the Lightroom catalog or delete it from the disk, from the hard drive? So it's a two stage. Yes, yes, yes. It's a two stage process. So I don't like doing that. So I use a, a program that I've had for many years now called ACDC. You can use a, any other program you want. It's just a thumbnail viewer. This one reads raw files. So it's very handy for me because I shoot in raw. If I've shot five different types of birds, I'll name those five folders, drop all the photos into those five folders, the separate folders, and then I'll go through and edit the, the photos. The reason I do this also is that if I don't have time to actually edit them at the time, what I will do is in that temporary folder, I will name the primary folder. So for example, if I've gone to Lake Eden, I will create a directory called Lake Eden and then I'll select the date under I'll make a folder underneath it for example let's say 3rd of March 2020 and I'll put all the photos in there so that if I go out at another time before I've had time to edit these or to go through them I'll I might say okay well these were taken on the 6th of March the reason I do that is that I know the, the dates and all that that the photos were taken because if they're going to be used in a photo walk I want to make sure that I'm using the right photo for that video. Today we're going to go through and we've got a few photos of different birds. We've got a beach stone curlew, a couple of beach stone curlews on the beach. We've got a pelican in flight, a little egret in flight, a whistling kite, now a whistling kite is a raptor. Raptors fly fairly quickly and they fly quite high up. So I'm normally shooting quite a lot more photos of raptors. And a magpie lark, we call them just peewees around here, but their real name are magpie larks. And if we have time, we'll go through a few photos of a sacred kingfisher. I'll show you how I go through now, culling and choosing which photos that I want. Now let's say so right at the start the first thing I do when I quickly go through the whole sets of photos is that any photo that is blurred or out of focus gets deleted straight away there's no fixing a blurred photo unless that blur is in the wings now for example let's say if it's an egret and they're diving down onto a fish and the wings have got a bit of blur I might keep that photo just because it shows action but most of the time I'm shooting it with quite a, such a high shutter speed that there is very little or no blur at all in the wingtips. So we'll go through now and we'll start off with the Beachstone Curlew photos. So this is my folder. There are seven types of birds here, but we'll start off with the Beachstone Curlews. Now, as you can see here, they start off quite far then they get very close and then a little bit further away because the birds just move much further away from me. So this one here, 
when it's a bird that I haven't when it's a bird that I haven't photographed before or if it's a bird that is very flighty I might actually just take a couple of quick photos of it either for reference sake or because on this day which this was only taken like last Thursday if I didn't get close enough to the bird I would still have a couple of photos for the photo walk video that I did when I went out this was taken at Buckley's waterhole on Bribey Island I wanted just a couple of photos at that distance I was actually quite far away from it at least 50 close to 50 odd meters away so I just wanted a couple of reference photos in case these birds took flight they are known to take flight so I thought I I won't take my chances I'll take a couple of photos from far off in case they take flight the bird from this spot here actually came down to meet its mate and we'll go through we'll just look there's 34 photos here we can see some of these that the curl is of actually eating You can see some of these have actually blurred so we'll just scroll back through here now because this is quite far a photo I'll just delete it because I've got some better ones this one here as well I can delete this one here I actually quite like because of the way the the legs are shaped now if we look at this one compared to the next one this is a very classic pose two feet on the ground but it has no real impact so I actually prefer this photo so we'll delete this one this one here I'll keep it's got this sort of quizzical look on it sometimes I like to keep photos so that the bird's got a little bit of character it's just looking at me like what are you doing over there you know so uh, sometimes I use that when I title the photo you know are you keeping an eye on me so it's a good idea to sort of keep photos like this just looking straight at me now these ones here they're just walking away from me so I'm not really I might keep one here for reference now this these two you can see like it's got nearly its feet on the ground now this is like a flamingo pose similar to the other one I actually quite like that compared to this one so we'll keep this one delete this one we might keep this one as well this one here is quite nice it's got its beak open we can't see its feet but that's okay but there's this big stick hanging out here now this isn't too much of a problem for me because if I really wanted to in Photoshop I can use content aware and get rid of that and it would actually be quite a good photo now I've just said that I use content aware in Photoshop now I know some people they're very purist they don't like taking stuff out if I'm posting a photo on Flickr to National Geographics I don't take stuff out of the photo unless it's like uh, paper or anything like that that's just lying on the ground but anything that is actually a fixed object in the photo it could be a rubbish bin or anything like that I don't delete it but for my photos that I display on my website and all that I see nothing wrong with deleting an object that is actually really distracting from the photo and I could have actually picked that up and taken it out of the way if I was photographing a sunset or whatever but I couldn't really walk up to beside the bird and say don't move I'm just going to take this log out of the way now this one here the, he's a bit blurred get rid of him that doesn't look too bad we go back yeah he's got one here we'll keep an eye on that one now between the two of them here this one he's only picked up one and he's much closer and there's actually a couple in his mouth so we'll delete that one we'll keep this one here he's just looking around we might keep that one for the time being we'll go through 
they're just walking along. Even though this bird here is out of focus, you can actually see it's like an action. He's actually picking up some stuff. So I'll actually keep that shot. Delete that one. Now he's looking at me. Now he's actually gotten quite a big mouthful here. We'll keep this one. Delete that one. And this is a, a set. So he's actually walking towards some sand crab, some soldier crabs here. You can actually see he's sort of he's eyeing off these little crabs here. So he's walking closer to them and then gotcha. So this one and this one I'll keep. This one here, not interested. And you can see like he's got one, he's got two. He's a bit of a guts. So he's got his big beak open here. He's crunched down, but the head's moving quite a bit. So I'll delete that one. This bird's out of focus. Now he's looking back at me. I'll keep that. He's not good. This bird here was actually starting to call out. That's why its beak was open. It was actually calling to its mate. So that's all the photos. Now I'm down to 20. So what I do now is actually I'll come back and just select the best ones. Now, because this is a bird that I haven't photographed before, I'm not going to do a severe cull. Uh, some of these I'll just keep as reference photos. So I might just get rid of a couple more, but I'll keep at least 15 of them. Normally I wouldn't keep that many. We'll go through. We'll start back number one. Now this one I really don't need. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll delete that one. I will keep this one. I quite like this one here. Now I've got better shots of it eating crabs over here. This one I can delete. Delete that one too. I'll keep these two because they I look they look quite good. And I'll delete that one. That's it. Get out of there. So I've actually left with 14 photos. So these are the photos that I'll actually keep now and we'll move on to the next set of photos. Now we'll go on to pelicans now, these pelican photos. And I was actually walking towards the beach holding my Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal, talking about what I was seeing. And all of a sudden this thing just appeared out of nowhere because I wasn't really looking too much in the sky looking around me for birds and I had to react very quickly of stopping the gizmo photographing this pelican and I'm shooting here at 500 mils so a pelican is fairly big when they came in it was a very quick reaction so I've only got nine photos here I'll show you why which ones I actually preferred now this one here looks quite good but the tips here are actually quite close to the edge. Now if I was trying to print that photo with a border, the wingtip would be so close to the edge. So this one here is actually probably much better. So I'll delete this one. We'll keep this one here. It actually looks quite good. But when we're looking at these two photos, now if I zoom in at 100%, can we see that the head is actually a bit blurred? If we come to the next one, I've got a very sharp head. So very similar pose. So we'll delete this one. We keep this one here. Now these two photos are very similar, but notice this one, you can actually see under the wingtips, it's actually quite lit up compared to this one, which is a bit darker. Now I know in Lightroom, I could just add shadows, but the less editing I have to do, the cleaner the photo is going to be at the end. So I actually prefer keeping this one. We'll delete this one. We'll delete this one here. This is very similar. So we'll delete the next one as well. Now it's actually flying away from me. But when you look here, look at the head on this one. It's sort of staring straight ahead. 
And this one here I actually quite like because it's like he's got his head turned towards me to take a sticky beat. Now his head is back towards where he's going again. So we'll see what the next one looks like and he's actually banking away again. We'll delete that one. So now we've only got four photos. One, two, three, four. Now I've got quite a few photos of pelicans in flight. So I'll delete the last one and we'll keep these three. I will most likely only be editing this one here. I really quite like this photo here and I think that it would actually look quite nicely framed. But I do know that some people actually like photos of when pelicans are, have got their wings spread and they're photographed from underneath. But you can see here, see it's sort of, it's got a couple of damaged feathers. So in the essence of things, this is not a perfect photo. Whereas here, although you can see a little bit of markings here, he actually looks much more gracious. Now the next set, is actually a little egret. It's a white bird. We're about 10.30, 11 o'clock during the day. It's very bright. I'm shooting uh, not in aperture priority, but uh, in shutter priority, keeping an eye on the exposure and all that. But it's quite easy to get blown blowouts on the highlights blowout on a white bird like this at this time of the day. So we'll look through these photos and I'll show you what I mean about that. So we've got 20 photos here. So he's actually started, he was a bit of a distance away. Now I know he's a little eager straight away because he's got a black beak and black legs and he's actually quite small. That's why they're actually called little egrets. So we'll go through and these are actually shot quite quickly, one after the other. You can see like wing spread tucked in, wing spread. You can see these, this one here, the highlights under here, there is just no detail. And it's actually also quite blurred. Okay, so we'll go back to the start. Okay. This photo here, although he's looking at me, it, it's not a photo that's got any sort of wow factor to me. Delete it straight away. I actually quite like that, but take a closer look. The head's blurred. Head's blurred a little bit, but he's got his wings tucked in. This is much better. There is very little blur here. I'll keep that one for the time being. I'll keep this one here very sharp look at that the, if we click in you can actually see the head of this is so sharp and this was taken at 1 1250th of a second so pretty fast wings tucked in not really interested blurred head this one here is quite nice he's got his wings cupped I might keep that one. Now that I know this one, this is the one I was talking to you about before. Most of the bird is blurred, so we'll delete that. This one here is delete as well. Quite nice shape, but you can see I've actually, he was flying a little bit low and the wing is cut off. There's no need for it. That's all right. Now wings tucked in, not really interested. This is quite a nice pose. Look how he's nicely stretched out. Wings tucked in. Tucked in. Now he's just flying away. So you can see I've got seven photos left and I've got three photos with four with the bird. It's got his wings open, but three of them look very good. So I'll quickly go through and I'll choose one of these three. This one looks good. This one looks very nice. This one looks quite nice, but if we go back, I actually quite like this one here. The reason between, I'll delete the middle photo here. If we look at, 
this one compared to this one again the bird is very close to the edge this one is more in the center so I actually prefer to keep this photo here now the highlights on here are quite blown so we'll delete that one he seems to be flying off so we've got five photos left so I'll actually keep just these five and I'll probably only get it one or two I don't like culling all the way down in case something goes wrong when I'm doing post-processing and I might decide to change my idea later and actually choose another bird now we'll go through the whistling kite here now there's 36 photos here of the whistling kite and if you look you can see that he's actually just flying all over the place now I'll bring these down so you can actually see all in one chance now I'm looking at these some of these are actually just about touching the edge or they've gone over so there's no reason for me to keep them I can just without even opening the photo I can just cut them off straight away because they're too close to the edge okay so now we'll just go through now it's blurred and it's also so dark that it's it's just not worth the effort to try to to process a photo like that now that doesn't look too bad he's got the sun on one side shadow on the other all dark now one I just deleted was also blurred this one here I know that it's blurred a bit now that's nicely spread but a bit dark but we'll keep it for the time being he's got his wings closed this one here is quite nice he's got that sort of hovering position you can see this is blurred we'll delete that this is quite nice look at that very well exposed now there's about two in the same way this one's a little bit off center now because I normally shoot with my focus point in the center I'll actually keep the one that's in the center we'll go through sorry we're back this one very similar photo very similar but this one looks a little bit better so we'll delete the first one a bit darker so again these are all taken so quickly but one is much brighter than the other so easier to edit a correctly exposed photo than one that is actually slightly underexposed so we'll delete this one I like this one he's, sand, he's sort of half tilted we'll delete keep this one now he's actually tilting even more so I like that one this was the second set now because I photographed one set he went away well it went away and then about half an hour later I actually saw it again so this is the second set now uh, he's got that nice golden glow on it diving down but if we look in the head yes that's fairly sharp now notice again same thing this one's a bit darker now same pose but he's off center so we'll delete that one we'll keep the next one which is in the center now the bird is just flying away from me so all the ones where he's flying away from me I'll just delete there's not much detail in that these are all quite similar again flying away from me so we're left with 12 photos now and in this program I can just magnify the thumbnails so this is fairly quickly I can actually go quite quickly and go like okay well I've got two photos very similar here again I'm just looking one straight on I've only got one straight on I'll keep that but I've got a couple I've got one two three four photos where the bird is actually flying to the left of me no need for four two or three that's all I need so uh, I'm looking at this one we'll delete this one up the top here 
and we'll look at these two final images and this one I'll delete, I'll keep them. So from 30 odd photos we're down to nine photos and that's where I'll keep it. I don't edit every photo but I just keep them in, a, in my folder there. So now we'll go on to the Magpie Lark or the, the common peewee. Now I've got a, quite a few photos of the peewee already so in this set of photos I'm just going to look at something that could be interesting and could make people laugh. This one is quite nice, it's got a bit of reflections but the photo's a bit dark. Now this one's much better so we'll delete the first one, we'll go through and we'll see if there's any that are blurred out. That's blurred. This is a nothing photo, nothing photo. It's really sort of, this one is just, it blends into the background. Now, this is a very common bird, but if this was, let's say, a beach stone curlew or a bird that I've never photographed before, a photo like that, I might just keep has a reference shot. Not to show anybody, but just saying, okay, well, I did take a photo of this bird. But it's very hard to make anything from a photo like this. So these ones here will just go through and delete. Just looking at stuff, but this big clump of weed there is really a big distraction. Now I really like this photo and this is a photo that I'm actually going to edit. When you look at the difference between this photo and the next one, this one here it's just sort of looking around. But this one, it's got its head up to the sky. And this is what I was telling us before. You want to take a photo sometime and this is when you've always got to be ready when the bird reacts. So if I click in like that, now look at it full fr like full screen. This will actually come up quite nice. You can't see all the head, but it's got a sort of comical look to it compared to these. So these ones here, they're of really no interest to me. This one here I quite like. It's mid-flight. Now if we zoom in, it's not tack sharp. You can see the wings are sharp. The legs are moved, have got a bit of blur to it, but it's quite a nice photo. So I actually kept this photo and I edited it when I did the photo walk for this wetlands area. This was shot just at the back of Dolly's Rocks. It's actually quite a nice photo. This one here I'll keep. So we're down to three photos because I've shot so many photos of this bird that even if I didn't have a great photo of it, I would have kept just a couple just for the photo walk. The next one here we're going to do is the sacred kingfisher. Now I've photographed a lot of sacred kingfishers, but as always, I always try to keep a couple from each outing that I go. A couple of these were used on my photo walk video and I'll show you like how I actually select the best ones from this set. So we've got 19 photos here. We'll go through. This one here was actually shot quite a distance away. Like I said, I always try to get a couple of photos as soon as I see a bird in case they take off. So now these here are quite nice, but if you look, you can actually see behind there there's actually like a branch or something. It's blurred out and it's it's really a distraction to the bird's face. So compared to the next one here where the distraction is further up the top. So we'll go through first and we'll see if there's any to the blurred. You're quite sharp. Now we'll come back. Now this one, although it looks quite nice, 
there's all this distraction here so I don't not interested these ones here like I showed before there's blurred behind the bird now if this was all I took on that day I would have actually kept them just for the photo walk uh, but they wouldn't have been displayed anywhere else this one here looks quite nice there's a twig down here that's blurred out but that's okay I'll keep one of these two keep this one we'll delete the next one now this is actually a very young sacred kingfisher the reason I know that is that if we look on its chest here it's got very nice little marking like little scales this actually is a very key indicator of a young bird and you can also see if you look at the bird the tail is actually quite short for it so but a distraction to me is this stick that runs behind the bird so we'll keep one shot of that for the time being now these are a very nice pose you can actually see it's very short tail here now if we look at this one the feathers are sharp but the head he had moved his head a bit or it had moved its head a bit so that's blurred he's actually got his head tilted a bit now between these two I actually quite like this one very nice pose so we'll delete that one very similar pose and this one here is crouched down a bit he's standing up crouching down now if we look at these two look in the top left corner and you can actually see that because I've moved the, the image a bit there's actually more rubbish in the corner so we'll delete that photo this one here looks quite nice but the branches come in but he's actually got his he's sort of blinked you can see he's got the protector on there so we'll delete that one now he's actually too close to this I've actually moved a bit all this is quite a bit of a distraction so we'll delete that this is a very nice frontal pose even though the branch is so big so we're down to five photos here so I quite like number three number four is not too good and we'll leave it at that so we've got four photos that we're actually going to keep now the last one here is a waiter here now these little redneck stints are only about so big uh, and this is the first time I photographed them so I actually took a couple of photos when they were a bit of a distance and also they were very skittish it was very hard to get close to them even though I was kneeling on the ground that's why they're quite small but with the gear that I use my Nikon D7500 and the Nikon 200-500 I find that I can crop into at least a third of the image and they're still quite nicely displayed for Facebook or for my photo walk videos maybe not my website which is like I don't like cropping any more than about 50% in but we'll go through these 15 photos this was one of the first photos I took he's actually sort of facing away from me we'll just look through and we'll see if there's any blurred out photos okay so we'll come back to the start okay this one's not good it's actually looking away this one is actually quite nice I like this because of this here you notice that the bird's actually got its head its beak stuck into the ground so it's actually quite nice there's a bit of distraction here with the reflection but uh, if I move the photo like this now you can see on the screen this actually looks quite nice so it'll actually make a very nice photo so and this is what I tell people when I teach people about wildlife photography you've always got to be ready for the unexpected so this is why you actually take quite a few photos this happens like in a blink of an eye he just pokes his head down and if you're not ready for it you missed it now this is another nice reflection shot so we'll keep that again this one here there's just too much going on here see that it's very hard to see the, the two of them and also their head is a bit blurred so we'll delete that one 
that's quite nice as well this nice reflection of this one here same here again see like now both of them are actually looking down so if we're looking compared this one to this one these are just walking along but this one here both birds are looking down so this is a huge win so this is definitely a photo that I would keep instead of this photo here now this bird is just wading through looking around a bit of a nothing shot a bit of a nothing shot now again head down looking into the ground now I know that there's a bit of distraction up the back here but cropping will actually get rid of this bird in the background now it's just walking away now I might just keep this one as well here because you can see it's actually its leg is tucked out so it's like an action, bit of an action shot we don't need that one now these are a little bit too far away so uh, although this one's actually got quite a lot of detail it's quite nicely we'll keep that one now we look closely at this one we'll look at the next one this one here is much sharper oh, about the same so we'll delete that one we'll keep this one no and we'll delete that one so now we're down to two four six photos so you can see that's like because I've been doing the video but this would have taken me only about maybe 10 or 15 minutes to actually cull through now if I have the time I actually would now open up Lightroom and import these into my Australian bird uh, catalog in their corresponding folders so into the Beachstone Curlew folder into the Australian Pelican folder and so on and when I import in Lightroom I also tag the photo I tag where the bird came from so like did it come from Lake Eden here it came from Dolly's Rocks uh, which year it was I don't tag the exact date but the year that it was taken in 2020 and I'll tag of course it's a bird photo and all that so that when I put it up onto my website or onto Flickr on Flickr all these tags will come up so if somebody's searching for let's say a beachstone curly photo taken in 2020 my photo would pop up there in their search it's always handy to do now what I might do is in the next week or so I'll actually do a video and we'll use the photos of the beachstone curlew and are the Australian pelican or yeah we'll use some photos from the the beachstone curlew and the Australian pelican and I'll go through and I'll show you how I edit one photo of each of these birds uh, to show you how I edit my wildlife photos thanks for watching today it's Charles here if you like this video subscribe to my YouTube channel and keep an eye out for my future videos